Hello. My name is Zeke. I'm a GitHubber. I want to show you this tool that I use all the time called Semantic Release and give a demo of how to set it up for your NPM packages. So Semantic Release is a tool that automates the package release workflow for NPM packages. And the idea is that you use semantic prefixes when committing to Git. So if you use a, a prefix like fix, the result will be a patch release to NPM. If you use a prefix like feat, as in feature, it'll create a feature release, also called a minor version and semantic versioning. And if you need to publish a major release, like a new version bump from 1.0 to 2.0, use this breaking change syntax in your commit message. So this is really cool because it means that once you have it set up, you don't have to think anymore about what your version numbers should be. You just use these prefixes when making your commit messages and leave it up to the semantic release tool to automate the version number generation as well as change log generation and publishing to NPM. So I have here, a uh, sample repository that you can go to now. It should be public semantic release with GitHub Actions on my Zeke account. So it's got a little rundown in the readme of what GitHub Actions is for, what its semantic release is for, and also there's a link to a video I recorded a couple weeks ago about how to get started with GitHub Actions. So here's a checklist of the things that needed to be done on a project to get semantic uh, release working properly. So the first step is to only allow squash merging of pull requests. This is not a requirement, but I like to do it because it makes the release process a little more foolproof. So I just disable merge commits and rebase, rebase merging, and now squash is your only option when merging pull requests. Uh, next, going back to the code, I like to install this app called Semantic Pull Requests. So that's a GitHub app. You can install it on an org or on a repository. I'm gonna go in here and configure it to add the semantic release with GitHub Actions repo. And now I'll show you in a minute what that looks like. Uh, we'll come back to that. So next you need to create an NPM token and add it to the secrets for your GitHub repository. Secrets are something that was added recently with the advent of GitHub Actions. It's a way for you to store uh, passwords or tokens in your repository without having them accessible within your code. So one easy way to do that, you can do it with the command line using NPM token create, or you can go to the NPM website and go to the auth tokens page and create a new token. I'm gonna to create a token here. You'll be able to see it. I will invalidate it after I record this demo. Um, so I've got the token copied that was generated here. Make sure it's a token that has uh, publish rights. And then I come back to the settings on my GitHub repo, go down to secrets, add a new secret called NPM token paste it here, and now that'll be available in my GitHub action, which I'll show you later. Okay, so we've done, we've set up squash merging, we've installed the pull requests app, we've created a token, we've added to the secrets. Next step is to create a release workflow file in our project. So um, let's take a look at our project first. So I've got a thing going here, it's a very basic application, it's got tiny little node module for adding numbers together. It's got tests. And you can see, actually, if we go back to GitHub, on every repository you have this tab called Actions. And you can click that tab and see all the actions that have ever been run on your project. So you can see when I committed to master this first working version, Actions actually ran this test for me. And the reason that this happened is because in, in my project, I have a YAML file in this GitHub workflows directory called test. So whenever I push to any branch, this code gets run. It, in, it runs CI to install, NPM CI to install dependencies, runs the build if there is one, and runs NPM test. So the output that you're seeing here on this GitHub page 
is happening as a result of me adding that YAML file to my repo. So we have a tests um, workflow, but we want to now add a release workflow. So the way to do that is to add a new file. So we'll just copy that and touch a new file called release.yaml in our repo. And then I'm going to come back to the readme and copy this. So now if I open release.yaml, I can paste this in here and let's take a look at what's in here. So whenever we push to the master branch, not any branch, unlike the test which pushes on it, which tests on any branch, we just want to do pushes to master. So this is pretty similar to the test workflow. We check out node, we set up the node version to 12, which is the latest long-term supported version. We install dependencies, we run the build if present, which in this case there isn't, but this nice NPM flag allows you to leave this in here in case you ever do have a build. It runs the tests and then it runs semantic release. And one of the neat things about GitHub Actions is that it gives you a GitHub token in your workflow run for free. You don't have to set that up. Um, and then this allows the semantic release command to have access to the NPM token that we added to our secrets. So now I've got a release.yaml file. Let's, let's see what's next. So we added that file. Now we need to basically create a new branch and use a semantic commit message to add it. So let's use GitHub, action, or GitHub Desktop to do that. So We've got our new thing here. I'm going to hit Command Shift N to create a new branch, and I'll say Add Semantic Release, and I'm going to bring my changes to that new branch. And then this is the important part. Um, so we want to use a semantic prefix here to signal to the Semantic Release tool that this change has significance and should produce a new version on NPM. So if this is a feature. Um, so our feature is adding semantic release. So we'll commit that, publish the branch, command P will do that, and create the pull request, command R will do that. So now I've got this new thing, this new draft pull request. Let's open it up. And what we should see here is two checks showing up. One for the tests, and that's the normal test suite, which should run pretty quickly because it's a tiny little project. And the other one is semantic pull request, which is the, the GitHub app that we installed earlier. And what this is doing is checking to see that at least one commit for the title of the pull request is semantic. So we could have actually committed a bunch of commits here that are not semantic, that just say add semantic release, fix broken thing, what is life, whatever. But as long as we come back here and add a prefix to the PR title, that is actually going to be the resultant commit when we squash. And that's what squashing is, is taking all of the commits and squashing them down into one commit. And the message for the commit is the pull request title. Note that if you only have one commit in your pull request, the message from that commit is used and not the pull request title, which is sort of a slight hiccup of using uh, squash on GitHub. Okay, so our checks passed, the tests passed, the semantic pull request check passed. So now we should squash and merge and we should, oh, I forgot something. I'm not gonna merge that yet. I forgot an important part here. And let's, okay, let's add that to the readme. So not only do we, good thing I remembered, not only do we need to create this, but we also need to set version to 0 .0 0.0.0 development in package.json. So the reason we do this is because at any given time in your code base, the number you see here is not necessarily reflective of what the, uh, the project version currently is. So this is a way of signaling to humans, just keep your hands off this number because we're letting machines change it. So I'll go into package.json. I'll add a version string here. And 
And there's another step that I forgot. We want to add semantic release as a development dependency on the project. So let's install that now. And I'll explain what that does. So when we look in the workflow in the release file, you'll see that it runs npx semantic release. So you might be wondering, why do we need to install it as a development dependency in the project if we can just run npm npx, which will just pull it straight down from the npm registry and run it? The reason is that we don't want to incur any breaking changes from new versions of semantic release. So we're kind of, npx will use our local installed development dependency version of semantic release when it runs this. And that gives us some confidence that we're not going to accidentally be using a new version of semantic release with breaking changes in it. So we've installed semantic release. We've set our version number. We've updated the readme. So I'll show you a little bit about some other prefixes here. So you can do docs is a, is a common prefix or doc. Um, add steps to readme. And then we also need to npm install semantic release. OK. So we have added some commits there, pushed to the origin. And I'm going to hit Command R, which opens the pull request again on GitHub. You'll notice here that not all of our commits are semantic. So this one, I just added kind of an arbitrary commit message. But that's OK. This PR is still semantic en enough because it has a semantic title. So we'll wait for the test to pass here. And once that happens, we can go look at this Actions tab and watch the action. I really hope that it works. In the meantime, I will close these. There it is. Okay, let's squash and merge it. So we merged, and now if we go to actions, we should immediately see that there are two things running. One is the test suite running because we pushed to master. The other one is semantic release workflow running because we pushed to master. So we can click on this and watch the action unfold. So far, so good. It's running the build, running the tests. Let's see what we got here. Looks like publishing version 1.0.0 to the NPM registry on this tag latest. That looks good. Completed step publish. Can you believe that? It looks like it worked. So now if we go back to that pull request, we actually should see a comment on GitHub Actions that tells us, yay, this landed as 1.0.0 on NPM. So we can click on that and actually see our new package right there on NPM. Um, also, semantic release now adds released labels. So if there were other pull requests that landed on this project before this one, and they were not yet released, uh, they would also get labeled when they were included in the latest release. So this is really handy if uh, external contributors land some new feature on your project and they're wanting to know, when is my feature landing in a release and what version number is it? Now that you don't have to tell them anymore because they'll get a comment automatically from the, from the GitHub Actions bot. I think that's it. Um, again, here's the repository. Um, yeah, trying to think of anything else that comes up often. Um, if you're adding this semantic release to an existing project, um, you'll want to make sure, OK, yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. So releases are a thing. Um, semantic release also generates GitHub releases, which is pretty neat. And it sort of generates a, a change log for you based on a summary of all of the uh, pull requests that landed into that release. 
Um, one thing you want to note if you are adding semantic release to an existing project is that semantic release figures out the version number based on the existing highest git tag. So if you have been publishing to NPM but not creating tags on GitHub and you install semantic release, uh, you might see some discrepancies the first time around. So what you want to do is before you set up semantic release, cut a new git tag with the current version of the, the release of the project, then install a semantic release and it'll have a good base version number from which to um, create new git tags and new NPM packages. All right, I think that's it. I hope this was useful. Thank you.